Just last month, I reviewed Terraflame, the latest release from indie developer Terrorin. So it may surprise some of you to find that just a few weeks later, I'm back reviewing Stargagnant, the latest, latest new release from the same developer, and one he was kind enough to send me a review copy of. How he does it, I honestly have no idea, but here we are again, looking at yet another solid release, albeit one that this time around has had a little extra help along the way. And help, I have to say, that overall has probably hindered rather than improved the core experience, with its central gimmick, instead of being a selling point, turning out to be the game's biggest frustration. Now, what you can always expect from a terror in game is fast, frantic, simple but competently made old school shooting action. And that is exactly what Star Ganyan delivers. The game only uses two buttons, and one of those is to change your speed, meaning for the most part it is a one button game. However, you do have two shot types, and the way you switch between them is the game's defining feature. So you hold the button down and you will fire a rapid but relatively weak version of your shot. Tap the shot button however and your shot will increase in power. Tap it faster and it will increase even further in power and tap it even faster and it will increase to what I think is its max level, although it is possible there's an even higher level I can't tap fast enough to reach. The reason for this mechanic is the game was supervised, whatever that means, by Meijin Takahashi, a former employee of Hudson Soft and something of a minor celebrity in his native Japan. And one of the things he is most famous for is his super rapid shot tapping ability, which allowed him to fire off 16 shots per second at the height of his powers, although he does admit these days he's satisfied to hit consistent 12 or 13. Those of you of a certain vintage may remember that back in the days when console controllers only had two buttons, this sort of mechanic was relatively commonplace, although it usually only switched between two types of fire rather than constantly increasing in power the faster you tapped. Even cave games often used this method to switch between rapid and focused fire when played in the arcade. Of course, on modern consoles, this has mostly been done away with, with rapid and focus or whatever other shot types a game uses being mapped to different buttons. And in my opinion, this wasn't just done purely because it was possible as gamepads received more buttons to use, but because it greatly improved the experience of playing. People could always play with the tapping versus holding method if they wanted, but the number of people who do so is, in my experience, pretty small. So it's something of a throwback to see this tapping type of gameplay being forced on players in Star Gang. And for me at least, it is not a particularly welcome one. I tried playing in handheld, with a pro controller, and with an arcade stick, but no matter the method, I found it hard to play more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time without getting a sore thumb or wrist, and more generally just finding the constant tapping kind of annoying. As mentioned, this way of playing has mostly disappeared because the majority of people don't like doing it, and to me it's almost bizarre to not just bring it back, but force it on players with no alternative. And alternatives could work here because the game has an inbuilt mitigation to the obvious problem of players just always using the most powerful shot through a rapid shot gauge that decreases as you used your tap shots, with the speed of the gauge decreasing usually increasing when using the more powerful shots. But the option is not there, and so I only ever played this in fits and starts, making it a very difficult title to find your groove with. Which is a shame because I most definitely did want to play more, seeing as in almost all other aspects, Star Ganyan serves up what would otherwise be a pretty great time. The action is as fast paced as ever, with stages this time usually featuring both a boss and at least one mid boss. These take a variety of forms, some of which may seem familiar from previous Terror in games, but some of which are very new and far more unusual in shape and design. This being, I think, because for this release some extra artistic help has been taken on, and while the game is hardly some lavish extravaganza, there is definitely both a bit more character and polish to the visuals than in something like, say, Terraflame. There is also a little story with short talking head introductions to each stage, some featuring a character based on Meijin Takahashi himself, as well as short and very simple between stage scene setting animations. These talking heads can be turned off, but the first time you see them, they are actually useful as they warn the player about upcoming stage hazards such as closing walls or narrow corridors. These variations in play add a nice bit of variety, and in general the game just feels a lot more cohesive and complete than previous releases. These improvements don't affect the gameplay in any real way, but there is a definite bit of extra polish to the proceedings compared to usual. As you'll be able to see from the footage, your shot usually fires both straight ahead as well as in the four diagonal directions. However, it doesn't start this way and begins as just a weak straight shot before being powered up, usually pretty quickly, by the green shot pickups. You also have a blue pickup that grants you a shield, which can take a single hit, and a yellow pickup which replenishes your power shot gauge. 
these yellow pickups are actually very plentiful and to be honest, for the most part, you can use your tap shot almost non-stop without the gauge ever bottoming out. For the most part, the game is on the easier side, although as with Terraflame, recovery after a death can be a real pain. Not only do you lose your shield, you lose all your shot power, meaning you go from having an almost screen covering spread to being flung right back into the heat of the action with a narrow, weak straight shot with no leeway through a protective shield. This can lead to sequences of quick deaths, and if you lose a life during or just before a boss fight, you can end up in real trouble real quickly. Scoring is the terror and staple of a counter for taking out enemies in quick succession, but there are also myriad other little ways to score through hidden bonus items, continuing to collect power-ups, taking out certain enemies at the same time or I think from certain positions, and indeed there are so many score bonus pop-ups that sometimes I wasn't even sure what I'd done. That said, it is all very satisfying and with the game offering potentially several extends across a complete run, you will want to pay attention to ways to score. A complete run, by the way, is seven stages, and each one is distinct with themed backgrounds and, as mentioned, a lot of unique bosses and mid-bosses. On top of the seven main stages, though, the game does offer a lot of other ways to play. There is a two-minute caravan mode, a rather extensive challenge mode, and a rapid tapping mode that simply sees how many times you can tap a button per second. There are also nice little options that allow you to change both the visual and audio styles to retro and chiptune variants respectively, and coupled with robust online scoreboard, Star Ganyan certainly does offer up a good number of extras and options and variant ways to play. And it does need to, because if you've looked this game up at all yourself, you've probably already noticed it is one pricey little fella. There was a big launch discount, but I think that has now expired, meaning you're looking at about 30 bucks in the UK and close to 40 in the US, which for most players is probably a bit of a hard sell. Now, Star Ganyan is the usual quality fare from Terror in Games, and it has improved visuals, more cohesion in terms of theme and a bit of story, and the game certainly has a lot to do in terms of modes and extras. However, for me, the forced tapping just is not a smart move, and I found it hindered rather than helped proceedings, and much as I enjoyed all those other aspects of the game, the long and the short of it is I just couldn't enjoy it for long enough to ever really get as into it as I usually would. With that in mind, I would give Starganyan a 7 out of 10, although if the tapping isn't something that's likely to bother you, I would recommend it far more strongly. But for most people, I would say this is a wait for the next sale kind of title. Let us know your thoughts if you try it. Are you generally a fan of tapping type shooting gameplay? Maybe I've misjudged this and actually lots of people love it. Either way, thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.